Hey everybody. So I've gotten a bunch of questions this year about how to identify film formats. So that's what this video is going to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell you the names of each of these formats. So if you already know what format you're looking for, you can look in the description and click the index link that will take you directly to that part of the video. Okay, so starting right here, this is Polaroid film. This is 828, 35 millimeter, 620, 120, 4x5, 5x7, 616, 116, 127, 120, 118 right here. This is 130, and this is 122. First one we're going to look at, this is the standard 35 millimeter film cassette. And you can recognize it because it's in a cassette like this. And uh, it has film that winds out of it and then is pulled back in by the camera. And the film has uh, perforations along the edges. Related to 35 millimeter is this little guy right here. This is 828. 828 is a standard roll film and it has the the film is the same width as 35 millimeter but it's not perforated and it just connects on the inside here 828 is easily identifiable because it is insofar as I know the smallest of the roll films there are 16 millimeter roll films which are smaller but this is the smallest of the really usable roll films and also you can see on the base it has those four teeth on the end of each flange and that's this flange shape is unique to 828 film one other thing about 828 before we go on is that 828 because it is the same diameter as 35 millimeter these spools can be re-spooled with 35 millimeter film. When you take the image, you'll get a little bit of the sprocket hole on the borders on the top and bottom of the, of the image, but you can still use your 828 cameras and still and load them with 35 millimeter film. The next one we're going to look at is 127. This is 127 right here. I'm going to take it out of the box. That, right there, what you're looking at, that's just the film part of the 127. That's what's behind the paper. Here's what it looks like on a spool. And this works the same way as 828. You want to roll it and the film is taped on. So the film is about 40, 45 millimeters long. The spool itself from end to end is about 55. And 127's spool is different from the rest in that it has one end which is just a plain nub and it has another end which has a prong in it. So it can only be loaded one way into a camera. The next film we're going to look at is 120 right here. Sometimes it comes inside of a nifty case like this, sometimes it doesn't. 120 comes on a plastic spool nowadays, it used to come on a metal spool. Some, the very old spools had a wooden core, in fact, uh, rather like this one right here has a wooden core. And 120, the spool length is 67-ish millimeters. And you can tell 120 because it either has a single flange opening right there, a single opening in the flange, or sometimes it has a cross. But the uh, flanges stick out a little bit further from the film than, uh, than the, from the paper. They're not flush with the paper. 620 is a similar format and 620 and 120 film are the same. The paper is narrower, the flanges are smaller, and the, uh, the spool is a little bit smaller. So the spool for the 620 film is about 64 millimeters from one end to the other. It has typically a single opening on the end on that one end and sometimes the other end has an opening like this one does 
Sometimes the other end just has a circle, uh, depending on when the, the actual spool was made. Mm -hmm. The ones that just have a circle on the end of them can only be loaded a certain way. 120 film, the media inside of the paper, and 620 are the same. So if you have 620 paper backing, you can re-spool 120 film onto it. And there's a, a link in the description to a video I made a couple of years ago showing how to do that. And you can use your old 620 cameras. Not impossible, also not entirely super easy. But it's fun to get to use some of those old 620 cameras. They're usually really easy and a lot of fun to play around with. 120 is a very common film. It's a high-end, medium format film. You can take phenomenal, phenomenal pictures with it. In fact, I have a photo on my wall at work that I took with 120 that's blown up to 16 by 20. And most people think it's a digital photograph. Actually, no one's picked it out as being film. And that's because medium format film is really great film. The next films we're going to look at are 116 and 616. Similar to 120 and 620, the difference in them is only spool size. This is the size of film that's used by 116 and 616, and the film itself is 70 millimeters long. It's enormous, enormous film. In fact, if you buy 70 millimeter film in bulk, which you can still get, you can re-spool it onto 116 and 616 spools, but most of those are obsolete box cameras, so they're not going to take really great photos, unfortunately. This is an actual 116 spool with paper backing. There's no film in it, but as you can see, it works just like any other spool type film with a light proof paper backing on it and on a spool and it's not wrapped very tightly and the spool is 80 millimeters long is that right no the spool is 72 millimeters long I'm sorry the 616 spool is also 72 maybe there's 74 millimeters but in that ballpark you can actually see that the spools are the same size, same width. It's kind of hard, the camera angle's bad, you'll have to take my word on it, but the spools are the same width for those. The difference is in the flange size and the opening in the middle. And the, these spools have a large core, these have a narrow core, and it's the same thing with 120 and 620, large inner core, narrow inner core. And otherwise, this holds eight frames and this holds I forget how many frames, let's find out. Eight frames. So you can see right there, last frame is eight. So even though they're significantly different size-wise, they both take the same number of photos. 116 and 616 aren't made anymore. They haven't been made in a long time, but like I said, if you get 72, uh, 70 millimeter film, you can re-spool it, but you'll have to find old paper backing, which is increasingly difficult, unfortunately, and um, it's, it's harder and harder to come by, and it's older, it's a little bit more brittle and more fragile, and unfortunately because this is larger than 120, whereas like 16 millimeter, 828, other 127 even, you can take a 120 paper backing and cut it down to size. These ones you can't, you'd have to cut two and then tape them together and it'd be a big mess. At any rate, 116 and 616. The next size we're going to look at here is 118. And 118, the film spool, I don't actually have any 118 film, just the spool and some paper backings. The spool itself is 90 millimeters from one end to the other. And this spool and it has a metal core. I believe 118 may also have had a wooden core. This end has a this end has a flan has an opening with flanges on the either side. This end has only a circle. I believe that's the way all of the 118 film spools were. One other interesting thing about this one in particular is that this paper backing is transparent. It does not have the black light proof coloration to it. And that's because, as you can see, it's an autographic paper backing. 
Uh, there were, I believe, 118 films that were not autographic. The difference was that the autographic had carbon paper attached to it, as well as film, so that people could write information on the back of the film as they were taking photos. Um, but 118 is fairly large, fairly uncommon. Everything we've seen up to this point, up to 116 and 616, you can easily, or without too much difficulty, at least find film developing equipment for. There were spools made for 118, 122, 130, and other sizes. However, they're almost impossible to find. I've only ever seen one for a 122 and 124 size film. And it belonged to a school and had been sitting in the school since the 1940s. And so you can still get stuff. It's rare and expensive. If you have film like this that is larger than 116 or if you can't find a large developing spool larger than 120, you can put this inside, you can unspool this in the dark and develop it in the dark in something like a long tube. Uh, I, when I developed some 122 film, I custom made a tube out of a, uh, um, a plotter paper core. It was a cardboard tube, but I covered it with about six layers of black paint on the inside and uh, it held up long enough to develop the film and the film the photos actually turned out well amazingly there's no reason for them to but they did and um i really don't recommend <laughs> recommend that that was a, a near disaster at any rate so this is 118 very difficult to find anything to develop it with anymore this is 122 we'll go up to 122 here and the film spool for this is 96 millimeters across. So this was used for brownie box cameras and the Model 2, and I, I have a Model 2 video if you're interested in learning more about it. I actually shoot 4x5 film in those cameras. They take such large images. They were designed to take images the size of postcards. So just like any spool film, you can see it just unrolls here and the, the film is taped in the back. This is good for six images. 124, I believe, was good for, for eight images. 124 and 122 were the same. Same spool, different paper, different length of film, but they could be used in the cameras designed for the other type of film. One type of the flange, one side of the flange here, or one flange has the opening with the wings on it. The other has just an opening that's a circle. So these could only be loaded one way in the cameras with which they were designed to be used in. Uh, very hard to find these anymore. However, that's what they look like when they're unexposed. Very tightly wound. You can see that there's a lot of flange space on the end of them. And that is an unexposed roll of 122 that will someday make it into one of my brownie cameras. The next one we're going to look at is the 130. This is actually smaller than the 122. And I also don't have any film of this, just the spools and paper backing. You can see that the spool is 80 millimeters wide. It's even larger than the 120 and the 116. It is not as large as the 122 and 118. Many of these film formats, like the 130, were made for one or two types of cameras. Uh, every time Kodak released a new camera, they released a new type of film. Great. Great for profit, I suppose. Just like printer makers, every time they release a new printer, release a new type of ink cartridge. Even though all the ink inside of it's the same. Anyway, so this works exactly like every other spool film. The film just tapes onto it. It has 130s, as far as I know, they all had wood cores with a slot at one end and a circle at the other. They could only be loaded a specific way. I've only ever come across three 130 paper backings and film cores. They're very, very uncommon. Uh, they actually are the most uncommon size of film that I've been able to get my hands on, or paper backing and spool. Uh, again, with these, because they're larger than the one, than the 616 and the 116, finding any kind of 
apparatus with which to develop the film if you have old old film lying around is going to be very tricky. Um, so those are all of the spool film sizes that I have. So the next film fat film. So the next film format is Polaroid, and Polaroid is this uh, f film right here, which has a uh, an 80 millimeter by I believe it's 80 millimeter image. Yeah, uh, or it's 75 by 75. Anyway, it's a square image. Here is what people hold the picture by, right? That's what you hold it by. Don't flap it, obviously, but you're not supposed to do that, but people do. But this is what you hold it with and write on. But it's also where all of the chemicals are stored for developing the film. And what happens is you take the picture, the camera exposes the film to light, and then it spits it out the front. As, and as it's spitting it out the front, there are some rollers there that press the film pack, bust the film packs, uh, the chemical packs rather, right here, and then push the chemicals onto the film. And the chemicals then develop the film. And the images from these are pretty a pretty good size. This is a piece of four by five sheet film, which is just a little bit bigger than the Polaroid. There we go. You can see the four by five sheet film, I can't even get it all in this view, is four inches this way by five inches this way. That's about 100 by 125 millimeters for everybody who doesn't live in the US, Liberia, and Myanmar. And there's a little notch on the 4x5 right here. The emulsion is right here. So if you're loading the film this way in your film back, the notch should always be on the top, I believe. Uh, you can, obviously can't see it when you're loading it, but um, at any rate, so the, the emulsion side, here's the notch. The notch is different for each type of film, so that when you're loading the film in the dark or unloading it in the dark room, you can tell just by feeling the film whether it's 100 ISO Arista, like this is, or 400 ISO Tmax or 320TX, whatever it is you're using, it will have a different notch code. The last one we're going to look at is the biggest type of film that I use and I use this only in a pinhole camera. I do have some 4x5 cameras that I use, but 5x7 cameras are enormous. This is 5x7, and it is so large, I can't even fit it on the whole screen, but it's five inches along this edge, which is 125 millimeters, and seven inches along this edge, which is, uh, doing my math, 125 plus 50 is 175 millimeters along the long edge, give or take. And you can see again, it also has an edge code. It's in the same relative position as the 4x5 edge code. I have no idea what kind of film this is, otherwise I would tell you uh, what the edge code stands for. I think it's really, really old T-Max 100, I think, at any rate. So you can see the, the film just keeps on going and going and going and lining up the 4x5, which is an enormous piece of film, putting the edge codes together, there's still a lot more film in the 5x7 than in the 4x5. So anyway, that's film formats right there in a nutshell. All kinds of different sizes and shapes, and they were for, for different cameras, different purposes, different types of users, and all kinds of different niche needs. It's making it rain film formats. That's what I'm doing. Rain and film formats, just like that. So anyway, if you have any questions about film formats, there are some that I didn't mention in here and didn't show examples of. And if you'd like to see examples of some others, let me know. And if I can, if I have them or if I can track them down, I'd be more than happy to, to uh, give you some information about them. If you have any comments or uh, suggestions for other videos, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about responding to comments very quickly. And if you have any um, comments, wait, questions, comments, suggestions, I feel like I'm missing something. If you want to subscribe, you can do that with the subscribe button, wherever that is when you're seeing this. And one last thing, thank you guys for watching.